Hi, so this is the second part of the previous video, investigation of breast symptoms. In this video, I'm going to uh, tell you about some details about the important investigations that are done most commonly. So the first investigation that is done is mammography. So it is a soft tissue radiograph. The breast is in direct contact with the ultra sensitive film. Exposure to low voltage high amperage x-rays is there and the dosage of radiation is 0.1 CGY. So it is a very safe investigation. As the age increases, the density of the breast decreases, hence the, hence the sensitivity of the mammography increases. So screening in a lady with family history should be done a decade before the age of onset in mother and it should not be done in young women uh, if it is not necessary because the sensitivity is not so much when you do mammography in young females. 5% of breast cancers are missed by population-based mammographic screening program. More sensitive uh, investigations are digital mammography and tomo mammography. Barrett square is very important. It is very important to remember because it is the scoring from 0 to 6 that differentiates from uh, benign and malignant conditions and also it tells you the way for management and likelihood of cancers. The second investigation that is done is ultrasound. The young women with the dense breasts are most commonly uh, investigated with ultrasound. So it is used to distinguish cysts from solid lesions. It is not useful for screening because it is operator dependent. It is used to localize impalpable areas of the breast pathology. Suspicious glands are um, also biopsied by guiding with ultrasound. And second look ultrasound biopsy is also used. Then the third is magnetic resonance imaging. It is used to distinguish scar from recurrence. It assess, assesses the extent of high-grade ductal carcinoma in situ, but it is not useful in low-grade ductal carcinoma in situ. It is used to assess multifocality and multicentricity in lobular carcinoma in situ. Best for women in breast with implants, screening in high-risk women are used uh, with magnetic resonance imaging and especially with having family history. MRI guidance or biopsy is also used nowadays. Then next is needle biopsy or cytology. It is usually done under local anesthesia. A spring-loaded core needle biopsy device is used. For cytology, 21 gauge or 23 gauge needle plus 10 ml syringe with multiple passes through lump and negative pressure in syringe are used. The aspirate is smeared and the air uh, and air dried or fixed. For FNAC, fine needle aspiration cytology, it is least invasive for and used for cellular diagnosis, rapid and very accurate. Pause negative are also occurs as sampling error or invasive carcinoma cannot be distinguished from in situ. For core biopsy, it is a definitive pre-operative diagnosis. It differentiates between the ductal carcinoma in situ and invasive disease that cannot be differentiated by using FNAC and tumor stain for receptor status. So it is important for neoadjuvant therapy that is given after uh, surgery. So then comes large needle biopsy with vacuum systems. When the sample, uh, when the biopsy volume increases, the sampling error decreases. Hence, in large needle biopsy, we take a large volume of biopsy sample. So eight gauge or 11 gauge needles are used. It is also used for the management of microcalcifications and for complete excision of benign lesions, for example, fibroadenoma. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos. I hope this video is helpful. And if you have any suggestions regarding any topic you want to listen from me, so kindly uh, write it down in the comments below. And if I need any improvement or any corrections, kindly tell me because I'm also learning and I just want to help others. So thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care.